Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating some flat fall foliage directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. We've got a lot of elements to get through, but this is very beginner friendly. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. And I am only using one brush for this entire piece and it's my free mono weight brush. I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. So I'm going to start out by creating a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi and then we'll get started. Okay I've got my document all set to go and the first thing I'm going to do is set my background color. So come over to your layers, tap on background color and you can see I've got all of my colors loaded up down here and we're going to choose the very first one at the top and that is our background color. And the next thing we're going to do is draw our largest floral elements and then everything else will kind of surround them and build up around them. So we're going to start with our largest elements and then move on back to our supporting elements. So our first element is a large open flower. And this open flower is just a general flower shape. So it's a really handy element to know how to draw because you can integrate it really easily in any of your future artwork. So on this very first layer, I'm going to grab my red, which is at the bottom at the very end. And we're just going to draw a nice big petaled flower. And I am using my mono weight brush for this and the size of my brush is 6%. I'm going to drop that color in and now I've got my flower right there. We're going to give our flower a center. So I'm going to tap on my color and grab the second one at the top. So it's the darkest blue color. And in the very center, we're just going to draw an oval, fill that in. And now we're just going to add in some extra detail. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush down to 3%, draw some lines up, and then some dots around them. And then just to add a little bit more detail to the flower itself, we're going to add in some additional petals. And to define them, they have to be a little bit lighter of a color than our background color. I'm going to create a brand new layer for these. I can rename this one Red Flower. With the new 5X version, you can just scribble through and that will erase it. And then you can just write red flower. And then for this top layer, we're going to rename this one red flower details. Okay, grab your pink color and we're just going to draw some half moons around. So the half moons are going to be smaller as you're closer to the center of the flower. And then I alternate as I go outward and they're, and they're going to get larger. Okay, fill them in. Okay, we've got our first flower, so I'm just going to group these two together and call this red flower, create a brand new layer. I like keeping everything on separate layers because now I can move and manipulate it. So I've got my red flower, so I can just move it wherever it needs to go and group everything together. And it'll make putting this composition together really, really easy. So we're going to move on and repeat the exact same thing, only this time I'm going to do a pink flower and then I'm going to do an orange flower. So I'm going to speed up the video. The pink flower is going to be slightly smaller than this one and then my orange flower is going to be the smallest one. So it's the same exact steps I'm just using different colors and you could just reuse this one and change the color of it but I like since this is the focal point of the composition I like drawing them all from scratch so they look different enough from each other to seem more organic okay I'll speed up the video and then I'll be back Now that I've got my three flowers, we can arrange them right in the center. So I'm going to position my red one kind of like where it's already at. That feels pretty good. And then I'm going to take my pink flower and position that one right about there. But I want it to be behind my red flower, so I'm just going to drag that group behind my red flower. And my orange flower is going to be the backmost flower. So I'm going to select that and dra drag that all the way to the bottom. So let's move the orange flower into place right about here. And I can rotate it using the green node right here. So that feels a little more comfortable. I'm going to rotate my pink flower just slightly. I try to avoid, um, let me show you, these little gaps right here. I want to make sure that they are not showing through because it will become a distraction to the eye and I want the eye to focus 
on the flower. Zoom out, make sure everything looks good. All right, so now we can move on to some supporting flowers. So I've got some just really simple daisies that I wanna add in. So I will do the first one and then I will speed up the video for the remaining ones. But for the most part, I am grabbing my yellow color right here. I'm drawing the daisy petal shape, fill it with color, and then add in the center. So I'm just going to grab my darkest blue color again for this and just add in that circle in the center. So really, really simple and a nice, easy supporting secondary element. So this one's going to be my largest one and I am going to place this one behind my orange one, but make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to position this all the way to the back because whatever's your bottommost layer will be behind everything. So that's important to remember. All right, and I'm also making sure again not to have any weird gaps right there. I want everything kind of tucked in really nice together. So I can reuse this daisy if I want to and just rotate it so it looks a little bit different. Daisies are really nice for that. So I'm going to create a copy of my daisy and I want it to sit on top of my orange and my pink one just to add a little more visual interest. So I'm just going to duplicate this and then drag it above my pink flower. So now when I position it, you can see it sits on top of both of those and I can rotate this so it looks a little different than my other one, even though it's the same flower. All right, right in there feels good. I'm gonna reduce the size just a little bit more. And then I'm going to add a cluster of three over here and then I'm going to tuck another one of these. Actually, I can just reuse my largest one. So this one's gonna tuck like right around here and rotate it a little bit. That feels pretty good. All right, so I'm going to draw a cluster of three here uh, just to make them look a little bit different since I've been reusing the same element. So I'll put a cluster of three down here and then we'll move on to our next elements. And I do have a few gaps on this last one just because it's not touching my main elements and I'm going to have some foliage behind those areas. That part's okay with me. I just wanted any areas that were right next to my largest elements to be nice and smooth and not drawing too much attention. Okay, so I'm going to group my cluster of three together. And now we're going to move on to our berries. I like adding in these berries next because it kind of gives me an idea of how wide my entire composition is going to be and the general shape that it's going to take on. So these ones I really use as reference points as I'm building up and building around my main elements. So I'm going to put a cluster of berries right here, right here, and kind of down here. So I like drawing the berry shapes first and then I like adding the stems on afterwards. And these ones are going to be behind everything so I can come down here, create a new layer and drag it all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna rename this one berries and I'm going to grab my orange color right here. So it's the second one on the bottom and I'm still using my mono weight brush but I'm going to increase the size of it to make this really easy to draw them quickly up to about 15%. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to add in a few berries over here and kind of stagger them at different heights. It feels good. And I'll do another one over here. Okay, so for the stems on these, I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. I'll label this one berry stems. And I'm going to grab my darkest color for this. Let's go down to 4%. So I'll draw one kind of stem down and then connect off of that. All right, and then the next thing I do, so this one is at 4% so I'm just keeping a mental note of that because I need to come back to that later for the other ones But I want to show you how I draw these so I'm going to come down to 2% for this final detail And you can see how it goes right on top of my berry a little bit, but we can cover that up By just creating a nice transition from the stem to the berry So that's what I'm going to do for all of these So I'm going to speed up the video, but I'm just repeating these same steps for all the berries Okay. 
Okay, now that we have our berries all set, we're going to add in one more supporting kind of floral element. It's got a, a much different texture to it than regular florals, but it makes everything really interesting and we're using white for this part. So we've got some nice contrast that we're introducing as well. So the general shape of this, we're going to start off with the stem this time for this one. And I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to grab my light blue color right here. So I'm at 4% with this. And I'm going to draw just one stem up, give myself a nice little transition area, and then right behind it, so I'm going to create a layer right underneath it. I'm going to grab my white, and these ones are really fun and easy to draw. They're basically scribbles, so we're just going to scribble one layer. We'll scribble another layer, and it's okay to have little holes poking through. It just adds to that nice texture. So it's going to end up being a little bit of a cone shape, so it gets smaller as you go up. And that's as far as I'm gonna go with that. Um, let me try, I'm actually going to do this again with a smaller brush, because I think that'll make it more interesting. So I'm gonna come down to 3% for this, for the scribbles. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And I can group these two together and now I can position it right where I want it to go because I feel like it's coming out a little too far. I want to tuck it in a little bit more and maybe rotate it a little bit. And that feels good. So now I can just replicate this. So just slide it over to the left, choose duplicate, and then use my copy to just have a second one right here if I want. Or you can redraw them. It's totally up to you. So I just want to have two right here. And let me make it a little bit smaller. So it feels different than the other one. So I've got two right there and I'm going to add in like a little cluster right behind my daisies down here. So I, I think I'll have like three or four, um, but the exact same thing. So I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to draw these ones from scratch just so they look a little bit different. All right, now that we've got our main elements drawn in, now it's time to support them all with a bunch of different types of foliage. So the first type of foliage is a really general leaf shape. It's very, very simple to do. So we're going to add in a bunch of those and it's going to be a darker color because it's going to be the furthest most back. So everything sitting on top of it gets more attention, but it really fills everything out and makes our bouquet feel really full. So I'm going to grab this color right here. It's the third one on the top and I'm going to make sure that this is my bottom most layer because it's the furthest back element. So I'm going to come down here, create a brand new layer and just drag this so it's right above my background color. So I still have my mono white brush selected and we're just going to add in a few of these because it is such a background element. But the main shape of it, I'll draw it up here so you can see. We're just going to draw a stem. Let me make this a little larger, it's 5%. Draw a stem and then these pointed ovals. So they're just going to come right off in a symmetrical fashion and then fill these in. And now I can position that right back here. That's actually a pretty good size for it. Maybe just slightly smaller, but I like having it be a little bit larger back there. Okay, so I can replicate this. I can draw new ones. I'm going to add in uh, another one right over here near my pink flower, and then maybe a couple down here. The next element we're going to draw in are some even simpler shaped foliage, but they're brighter, so they're going to call more attention to themselves. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above all these leafy elements that we just drew. So they're going to sit on top of the leafy elements, but behind everything else that we've drawn so far. So the color is this mint color right here, so I'm going to tap on that. And this shape is going to be kind of like our pointed oval, only it's going to be just a little softer on the points. And you can draw these individually or all at once. For the sake of time, I'm going to draw mine all at once here, but you can definitely draw them separately. Plus we're going to apply a clipping mask to all these. So that's something to keep in mind too. So I'm just gonna come around and place these sporadically around. If it's hard to see, you just wanna make sure you're closing your path because if you leave your path even a little bit open right here and you go to fill it in, it's going to bleed out and get on your whole background. So just keep that in mind. You wanna make sure you're always closing your path when you're drawing.
Okay, now that I have all of my leaves drawn in, I'm going to add in just a little bit of detail to them to show that they are a leaf because right now they kind of look blobby. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it, create a clipping mask. So just tap on the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. And we're going to use this gray color right here, right next to the mint. And I'm going to reduce the size of it down to 3%. Let's see how that looks. And because it's a clipping mask, now I can draw straight through my leaf and you can see it doesn't show up on either end. So I can draw these lines straight down and not have to worry about where they end. Okay, we've got all those details in. And then the last element that we're going to add in are just some branchy details that are more line art than filled in shapes. So it just adds another dimension of texture to the entire piece. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. This one's going to be beneath the mint color, but above these leaf shapes right here. So I'm going to tap on the top leaf shape, create a brand new layer. We can label this one branches. And I'm going to grab this kind of pinkish color right here. Size of my brush is 3%. So the way that I draw these is wherever there's some white space or any place that feels like it could use just a little something extra, like right up here, my eye's going up here because there's this big empty space that kind of needs something. So what I'll do is just draw in, and it's really like a scribble style. It's super loose. I'm not thinking about it too much and just drawing a shape in. So these are kind of my branch shapes. So that's how to create a bouquet of flat fall florals directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this video are right in the video description, including the free color palette and the free brush. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.